Good morning. Good morning. Happy Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. Uh, we have uh, a number of announcements. Uh, you have uh, one great hour of sharing. There should be one of these in your bulletins. Uh, if not, they're in the, on the table out there. Uh, one great hour of sharing is, and that'll be divided equally between PCUSA and UCC. So that is coming up. Lenten fundraiser at Frisch's this Tuesday, April 12th, at the Delhi Frisch's from 4 to 9. Uh, mention Westminster Union Church and a St. John's Westminster Union Church. Um, little typo there, should be St. John's and Westminster. Uh, and that cashier, uh, when you check out, and Frisch's will donate 20% of all the proceeds to the church. Uh, the next Lunch Bunch is this Wednesday, April 13th at Ron's Roost, 11.30 a.m. Call Carol uh, by tomorrow if you're going to attend. Monday, Thursday, we are able uh, to get back together this Easter, Monday, Thursday, 7 o'clock for the worship service, but there will be a potluck at 6 p.m., um, sign up, let us know you're going to be here uh, if you're going to attend the potluck. Um, and that would be a good thing. By the way, we have you sign in when you come in. The reason we do that is that it helps us to see who we might be missing. So if, if someone, you, you sign in, uh, if we see a name missing for a week or two, then we, we know that we made there somebody to check up on, make sure everything's okay and stuff. Uh, so that's why we have you, you sign in. We're able to, uh, it's not like Big Brother. We're not, you know tapping your phone and stuff. But we do like to know who's here and, and who might need some, some extra prayer or attention or, or a visit. So thank you for doing that. Uh, Good Friday. The sanctuary will be open from noon until 3. If you want to come in and just have a, a quiet time of prayer and reflection, that will be available for you. Next Sunday is Easter. And 10 o'clock, our usual worship time. But at 9, we're going to have a delicious continental breakfast. That's what the announcement says. It's going to be delicious. And so nine o'clock, uh, we can be there. Going to have great music, uh, music presented by Josh, a wind, woodwind quartet, uh, the breakfast. What a great day Easter is. Our hope, our everlasting life should be festive and celebratory, and that's what next Sunday is going to be. For His Glory Food Pantry, April Cereal and Cereal Bars. You can put them on the table there. Still looking for volunteers to be on call and ready to staff the nursery. We need two people per Sunday 
ready to go there, uh, especially for Easter. We may have some family. In fact, we are going to have. In fact, my five grandkids are going to be here next Sunday, one of which is 18 months and should be in the nursery. So uh, give his mom, my daughter, a break. So uh, you'll have an interesting time with him. One great hour of sharing, I already said, special offering there. Uh, it, uh, congratulations to Kayla Soldano as in uh, being, uh, in fact, it, it's posted on the bulletin board on your way out. Uh, check out her Oak Hills High School musical that she's a part of. We're having powerful tools for caregivers, a self-care class for family, caregivers of, of family members. Uh, who takes care of you is the question. Uh, very often the caregiver is, is tunnel vision into caring for their loved one, and that's good. Uh, but at times, uh, we need to take care of ourselves as caregivers as well. That begins April 21st. Uh, join us for sermon talk time. And uh, that was a boatload of announcements. It's a busy time of year, and that's a good thing. And in this Sunday, Palm Sunday, beautiful sunshine reminds us of our hope, of everlasting life, of, of, of God who loves us more deeply than we are able to comprehend in our finite minds. So uh, let us prepare our hearts to worship God. Please join me in the call to worship. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lord, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of the Let us worship God. confession followed by silent personal confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have talked about others rather than praying for them. We have selfishly sought our own way at the expense of others. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be. So that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. For the glory of your holy name.
Hear the assurance of pardon. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 5, we read these words of assurance. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Our scripture lesson today is from Luke chapter 18 verses 31 through 34 in the New International Bible. Jesus took the twelve aside and told them, We are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. He will be delivered over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, and spit on him. They will flog him and kill him. On the third day, he will rise again. The disciples did not understand any of this. Its meaning was hidden from them. They did not know what he was talking about. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a lot going on this week with uh, Holy Week, Palm Sunday, of course, we remember Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. There's uh, a lot to do about rabbits, <clears throat> chocolate, Easter egg hunts. Easter egg hunts are pretty popular, aren't they? Uh, families have Easter egg hunts. Churches <clears throat> have Easter egg hunts. Communities don't have Easter egg hunts. They just have egg hunts. They have to drop the Easter 
In fact, there was one in our community just yesterday. We're driving by, and it said, egg hunt. And that phrase always intrigues me, egg hunt. I used to, when I was younger, do some deer hunting, and that image of egg hunts kind of pops into my, as my wife would say, twisted little mind at times. And I imagine, well, what is the challenge of an egg hunt? First of all, I didn't know, you know, there's a deer season and so on. I didn't know that it's open season on eggs. And what's the challenge? I mean, we don't need a license. You don't need a, a, to dress in hunter's orange. And the egg just lays there. Look! <laughs> and then there's nothing to take home. Egg hunts. There's a lot that goes on on Easter. And I find it ironic that the very reason for a community egg hunt is Easter, but they have to drop Easter from the egg hunt. And then we find that as we begin Holy Week, that Easter isn't about rabbits or chocolate or egg hunts. In fact, what is it about? Why was Jesus on his way into Jerusalem? Why did he go to Jerusalem? And I wonder at times, as we read these verses, we see the disciples, the, the, the 12 disciples, the inner circle, Jesus' followers, failed to grasp what it was all about. And I think about everything that goes on around this holiday that, that distracts us from the real reason for Jesus going to Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday. And I wonder at times if you and I also miss what it was all about. Do we, do we get it? So what was happening on this day? Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He's going up to Jerusalem. And the thing about that phrase, up to Jerusalem, no matter where you are or which direction you are coming from, if you're coming from Galilee, you were going, even though you were headed south, you're going up to Jerusalem. East, west, you go up to Jerusalem. Jerusalem's uh, elevated. Jerusalem is the special city. Jerusalem is the center of it all. And Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. And it, it's a joyous, a joyous walk up from Jericho down by the, the uh, Jordan River. And it's uphill all the way into the city of Jerusalem. He's surrounded by more than just the 12. The 12 were the inner circle. The 12 disciples were those whom Jesus had called to follow him more closely, to live with him, to learn from him. There were other disciples, other people who followed Jesus for all those years who were not a part of those 12. In fact, we know that. The reason we know that is, one of the reasons we know that is from Acts when they needed to replace Judas, and they elected another disciple, apostle, who had been with Jesus from the beginning. And so he's surrounded by this crowd of followers, but there's also more people walking with him to Jerusalem, because Passover was coming. And people would stream into the city of Jerusalem to celebrate Passover there, to make the offering of a lamb there at the temple to celebrate Passover with their families. It's a joyous time. It's a happy time, Passover. Even to this day, it's a, it's a celebration and of God's deliverance of his people out of slavery from, from Egypt. And so that joy is also in the background. And into all that joy, Jesus says this. He calls those 12 away from the crowd they are around him, and this is what he said. Jesus took the twelve aside and told them, We're going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. He will be handed over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, spit on him, flog him, and kill him. On the third day, he will rise again. That almost seems out of context, doesn't it? It almost seems out of this joyous assembly of people. 
And this is not the first time Jesus has said this to his disciples, to that inner circle of 12. A couple of times he said what was coming. And there's two things that are necessary for us to be sure we, we, we catch as these verses go by us. One is that word, uh, the, everything written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. That Greek word means to be completed, means to be finished. It's the completion. In fact, the interesting thing is that that is the same word Jesus said from the cross right before he died. It is finished. It's not a coincidence. That's what Jesus was going to Jerusalem to accomplish. It is finished. The work of atonement, of being offered up in our place for what you and I deserve, for what those disciples deserved, being offered upon the cross. As the Passover lamb was offered up for Passover, so also Jesus is the lamb of God offered up in our place. That is what he is going to do. That's the center of his ministry. That's why he was born. And that is what he is to do. Now there's something else very important we need to understand here. <clears throat> to whom was Jesus handed over? He was handed over to the Gentiles. It was the Gentiles who executed Jesus. He died on a Gentile Roman cross. It was not the Sanhedrin, it was not the Pharisees, it was not the Sadducees or the scribes. In fact, they had no power for capital punishment at this point. Only the Romans could execute prisoners. And it was the Romans, the Gentiles, who crucified Jesus. And that's important. And so he's on his way to Jerusalem to fulfill that promise to fulfill his purpose of being <clears throat> the one and final Lamb of God offered up in our place. <laughs> Welcome to spring. He died on a Gentile cross in our place. Now, if anybody would understand Jesus' purpose and mission, it would be the 12 disciples, right? They had lived with Jesus for three years, they had seen miracles. They had seen people healed, lepers cleansed, even individuals raised from the dead. And so they certainly understood what Jesus was all about. And they all said, that's right, Jesus, that's what you're doing. We're behind you 100%. Not exactly. Listen to this. The disciples, the twelve did not understand any of this. Its meaning, was hidden, its meaning was hidden from them, and they did not know, they did not, the word is, they did not grasp what Jesus was talking about. It was almost like one of those, wait a minute, say what now? What are you talking about? They missed it. Why? How could they, living with Jesus for three years, worshiping with him, learning from him, working with them, how could this inner circle of 12 followers not grasp what Jesus had just said. I think there's a couple of reasons for it. I've mentioned one already. One is that it, it's Passover. It's a joyous time. It's, it's a happy time. Families journeying to Jerusalem, uh, celebrating the Passover, God's great deliverance of his people. And it is a celebration, even to this day, joyous time. And into all that joy, Jesus says, oh, by the way, the reason I'm going to Jerusalem is to die, but there's going to be an Easter, a resurrection. I think the real reason, though, is that they believe these 12 and the others who were following Jesus knew he was the Messiah. 
Remember, everything that they had seen, his debates with the leaders, his, his miracles, his teachings, this man is the Messiah, and this Messiah is on his way to Jerusalem. Jerusalem will be the center of the Messianic kingdom. He is obviously on his way to Jerusalem to establish his Messianic kingdom, a vast kingdom greater than Solomon's kingdom ever was, an empire driving out the Romans, establishing and reestablishing the nation. That's why he's on his way to Jerusalem. And us 12, we will have, we'll be in the vanguard of this new messianic kingdom. We'll all have positions of authority. In fact, they used to argue over who would be first in the kingdom of God. And what they meant was the messianic kingdom. And that's coming. That's their expectation. Messiahs are not crucified by Gentiles. They come to establish an empire. And that's not what Jesus was about. He was going to Jerusalem to be offered up on their place on the cross and rise again. That's what Holy Week is about. That's what Jesus is all about. And I wonder if if we grasp it. I wonder if we want a tame Messiah, a Messiah who fits comfortably into our lives, <clears throat> that we can <clears throat> carry with us like we do the keys in our pockets, who fits casually into our lives. And what he just said does not fit casually, does it? There's one thing that, that worries me, that gets my attention every time I read these verses, and it's in the background. Here were individuals, as I have already said, who followed Jesus closely for three years. Three years. Day by day by day. Each day a day of instruction. Each day seeing Jesus as he was, the Son of God. Each day seeing miracles and learning from him. And being in the center of those vast crowds who surrounded him in Galilee, Capernaum, Magdala, and all the other towns and villages. And they missed it. They missed it. And the reason that worries me and gets my attention is that, like many of you, I grew up in the church. My faith from a young age. I have worked many years, more years than I, count to re than I care to count, of doing this. And certainly, I cannot miss what Jesus is about. Could I? Have you read the account? If they could, I could. If they could, so could all of us. Do we grasp what this week is all about and what Jesus is all about? Does it float on by our lives? Do we prefer a tame Messiah that is about fulfillment in life rather than atonement? That is one interest among many in our lives instead of being the center of our lives in faith. Do we get it any better than the disciples did? Do we understand it? If we understand it, then prayer each day is the background music of our lives. That our faith is not one interest among many, it is the interest in our lives. That we turn to the scriptures for guidance in good times and in times when, the, life when uh, the bottom drops out of our lives. It is the center of our lives. Do we get it? Do you and I understand this any better than those 12? There is... Some of you may be familiar with an author by the name of C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis, in some of his books, has a character called Aslan. He's a lion, probably drawn from the imagery of the Lion of Judah from the Old Testament. 
In one of his stories, as Aslan is walking away from the group, one of the characters says to another, Aslan is not a tame lion. We want a tame Messiah, one that fits into the center of our lives conveniently when it fits our schedule and our wants and desires. Our Messiah is not a tame Messiah. God is good. Amen. Please join me in uh, declaring our faith. Uh, Sunday, we're using the Nicene Creed. Let us state what we believe. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten from the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, being of the same substance as the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. He became incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made human. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again, according to the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will never end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life. He proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He spoke through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We affirm one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. As we come to our time of prayer, uh, please continue to remember uh, the mission study team. They're working along well. Uh, there will be updates uh, probably within the next month or so uh, as they continue in their work. But uh, continue to pray for them as they make their way through this very important task. What are some other prayer requests that we can share together? It's not snowing today. 
Remember Beth, recovering lung transplant. Yes. Uh, Brett and Carol are their names, so please keep them in, uh, in your prayers. Yeah, I don't want it landing in my backyard. So, but, uh, and also praying for peace. There's so many areas. I mean, obviously, we think of Ukraine and what's going on there and the war crimes that have been committed, terrible things. But there are also other areas of the world that need an outpouring of God's grace and peace. And so let us continue to pray for uh, those individuals. I would volunteer to go up to the space station, but I'm afraid you all might send me. So, <laughs> especially if I couldn't get back. <laughs> Having a ride home is important. So, I'll do that. Let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your love that you pour out to us. We thank you for Palm Sunday and for Holy Week that is coming that reminds us of your commitment to us. That we, we serve a Messiah, a Lord and a Savior, risen from the dead, who is not one who easily fits into our lives but transforms us into those who will be living forever in your presence. Not a tame Messiah, but an active one. May we serve you with everything that we are. We pray and continue to pray for Beth. We ask that you would um, use the treatments, the talents of her physicians, nurses, technicians, all who care for her, that they would be instruments of your healing and strengthening grace in her life. We pray for ongoing recovery. In the same way, we pray for Brett and Carol, going, each going through their respective health significant health challenges, and we ask that you would give their physicians, nurses, technicians, all who care for them as insight and wisdom, and that um, your peace and health would fill their lives. We think of Ukraine. We think of the terrible things happening in that country. And we think of other places in the world where your peace Peace is absent, and we pray that you would be at work. There are things that happen that we cannot understand, that we, in our finite human sight, we cannot see you at work. And yet we know that you are, and we continue to pray for your peace to fill this area, these areas. And we have come before you this morning, this Palm Sunday, with great joys and also worries and concerns that fill our minds that we have not shared appropriately so, if not shared publicly. And so, we know that you hear our prayers, you know our hearts, and so hear these silent prayers that we bring into your presence. Lord, we thank you. Hear all prayer, spoken and unspoken, and hear our prayers even when we struggle for words. We thank you. We pray for open eyes, hearts, and ears 
to hear and see and know your answers to these requests that we have lifted before you. And hear us as together as your people, we pray the prayer that your Son and our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Again, I, I give you thanks. Joyce, with you in your continued ongoing support in this time of transition for this congregation, the future is indeed bright because God is at work in and through you. And as I say every Sunday, we're not about supporting an organization, but rather the advancement of the kingdom of God through your lives and through this place into our community and world. So please join me as we pray together the prayer of dedication. As we offer our treasure and hearts to you, O oh God, may they be used to pass on the promise of hope, of peace, of life, of community, to all in need of your gifts and presence in their lives. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now may the grace and mercy and peace from God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit fill your lives now and forevermore through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. <laughs>